Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel, Junk Journal Art. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm going to try a little experiment today. Whew, I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> I want to try to create some layered and really grungy Kintsugi flowers out of these die cuts here. Perhaps you are asking yourself, what the heck is Kintsugi? Well, I have seen Barbara at 49 Dragonflies doing this technique and in the moment I've seen it, I knew that I have to try that one day and today is this day. <laughs> so let me explain what Kintsugi means. Kintsugi is the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery. So that means that those broken pieces are put back together and then in those little slots that you will have there, there's a special kind of paste that is mixed with, for example, gold. Or you can also find that with silver and other materials, but I guess that the typical thing is gold, so that you can see those really tiny and delicate little slots that look really, really interesting. So it looks in the end like this whole piece was puzzled together, I mean back together, and you can still see those tiny things, um, and it looks like it is really fragile, even if it's, yeah, back at its original state and it's, it works of, of course as for example a bowl or a plate or you can also, also find that on teapots and other things that you can find for example in your kitchen or your dining room uh, etc and yeah Barbara at 49 Dragonflies has done this technique with paper of course she has made it on some photos and also on butterfly die cuts. I will link those videos uh, down below for you so that you can watch them as well and that you can uh, see where I got my inspiration from for this project. And today I would like to try to um, put this technique onto some layered flowers. So that's the reason why I have cut out these flowers here. I have made that with the help of a die cut, but of course you can also use some scissors or other flower shapes that you already perhaps have. I have used this Bix die cut by Zizix and you can see these flowers have not only different sizes but also different shapes so if you want to cut that out with scissors then you would have to make some different flowers then your end result will look way more interesting of course um, different shapes and different sizes and you can cut that out from whatever you want i have cut it out from some different uh, fabrics and paper. So this is cut out from fabric. This originally was um, a shopping bag, so a relatively normal fabric, I would say. You can see that the cut from this die cut is really, really crisp and clear. Um, that's because this die cut is this one that has this foam that is compared to the normal die cuts, you know, uh, these that are only made out of metal. Uh, this is very good for cutting fabric or other materials. You could even um, cut thin acetate or thin um, metal foil or something like that. And for those fabric cuttings, that is really, really good. And this is really durable and sturdy, of course. Um, but you can also, of course, try that with other die cuts that you have if you are sure that they are made for cutting fabric. I'm using this for, for fabric. My normal die cuts, I mean these, you know, those thin lids or something like that, I don't use for fabric because I'm not sure if that will work. So I want to be uh, on the safe side of the <laughs> die cutting machine, <laughs> if that makes sense. So this is a normal fabric. And these here, as you can see, uh, are also cut out from fabric. Here I had a little problem, but for this um, project, this is really perfect because can you see these little fibers that are coming out here from the fabric? 
that of course for a card for example would be not so good but for this project it's really cool when we have these little grungy things peeking out from the die cut because that makes it even more interesting in the end. Then I have cut out some of the flowers from a digital paper but of course you can use any paper that you want. This comes from my tea bag paper. I will link that printable down below for you in the description box. I have this in my Etsy shop. I have um, stenciled on some tea bags and then I have turned that into a digital paper so that you can use that in your junk journal or you can of course also cut out some pieces like this. And the last thing that I have here, um, this is just cut out from some sewing pattern. I think that looks really interesting. So um, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to color these that are neutral at the moment um, in the right colors. So I need yellow and turquoise for my project. So um, first of all, I'm going to choose a few of these because I know that I don't need them all. And as you can see, I also have those half ones. <clears throat> That's because I have put some smaller leftover pieces of fabric to my die cut uh, really randomly. And then I cut it through the machine, all of the um, fabric layers at the same time. And then, of course, you also get those half flowers for... Uh, greeting card or something like that this would be not so good of course it looks a little bit weird but for those layered flowers it is really cool to have those half ones or even only a quarter of that would work as well uh, that's really cool because uh, yeah those fragments look really really interesting especially when they have this frayed itch so for coloring them I'm using this Distress Oxide Spray Wild Honey. I've decided to use the spray because I want to have them really really wet um, so that the whole material is uh, can soak the color. You could also of course try to do that with your ink pad or some watercolor or um, acrylic paint that you have watered down. For me, the spray is the easiest thing and the fastest thing, but of course you can use any uh, kind of paint or spray or whatever you have. I add some water here. You could also try to take your ink pad. I mean, this wild honey ink also comes in form of an ink pad. You could put that to an acrylic block, spritz some water and then dip the fabric into that mixture. But that will give you, of course, not such an intensive result of the color. Um, that would be way more, I would say, pastel a little bit because of the light color of the fabric. So that's the reason why I have used the spray. And now I'm dipping my finger here a little bit to make sure that the fabric is soaked with the ink really really well like this so that we have ink everywhere and then <clears throat> I'm taking some Mod Podge this is this hard coat Mod Podge so that dries really really hard clear of course um, and it dries relatively fast when I use my heat gun. Heat gun, sorry. So that's the reason why I have uh, chosen this glue or this Mod Podge. Yeah, Mod Podge is actually a glue. Um, but of course, you can also use any other glue that dries clear. Uh, and if you have a glue that dries relatively fast and that you can use in combination with your heat gun, then I would suggest to use that so that you... Uh, yeah, can save a little time. And now I'm going over these petals here with my Mod Podge and I'm putting glue to the this glue to the whole surface because then in the next step we want to crumble these flowers up a little bit. Barbara imitated this Kintsugi effect in her projects by crumbling her paper and I want to do the same thing with my fabric here and it's a good idea if you want to use ink or other yeah the the paint is wet here of course if you have this wet paint there put your glue to your uh, paper here 
so that you don't get the ink or the paint into your glue and choose a paper where you put these down where you can get that off later really easily so for example baking paper would work really well this is some kind of a wax paper so that when you dry that later you can get it off really easily <clears throat> and when you have your glue everywhere then you can take something like this this is just some wooden sticks so that you don't uh, stain your fingers so much and then you crumble this up a little bit and try to do that really irregular and with the glue this sticks to the surface really really well so that you get these little things here um, and you can also layer those petals over each other a little bit so that this looks in the end really really irregular and grungy like this and while i'm doing this i'm uh leaving this here in the middle really really flat so let me show you that a little bit closer because later on of course i want to put my layers on top of each other and if i had those uh, little wrinkles here in the middle as well it would be really hard to glue that together and we don't need this effect in the middle of the flower so we are going to leave that just like it was before and try to leave that flat so when i have done this method here to all of my petals then i'm taking my heat gun and i'm drying this when it's dry it looks like this really really cool and those uh this this texture now stays on these fabric flowers because the glue is dry and of course the glue makes it really really stiff so that we can be sure that this will stay like it is and <clears throat> now we can search for a dry area here on our surface of the paper and then we can put this actually kintsugi effect to those little areas here and for that i'm using some gilding wax i have this one here from craft emotions but of course you can use any other gilding wax that you have or if you don't have gilding wax you can also use <clears throat> for example some acrylic paint but with acrylic paint it's really hard to get this effect i would say because acrylic paint is of course yeah it's paint it's it's a little bit sometimes hard to apply because it's so liquid and now i'm going over this these things here really carefully on paper that is relatively easy to do because you can yeah go back and forth but on this fabric you have to be a little bit carefully because um you don't want to press that so that it gets flat and that you get the wax where you don't want it you you want to have this wax only on those raised areas i will show you that in a second in detail so that it looks like this once was broken and now it is put back together like this kintsugi technique would uh, be as well so take your time and apply this really carefully and then when you have that it looks like this and you have these little areas like you would have it on the pottery as well really cool in the camera it looks a little bit matte but in reality this is really shiny and with the wax of course you get a really um, elegant uh, look to this and now i will let this dry really good so that the wax can't smear when i go over that with my finger to assemble those things later and we need another color now so i'm taking a new paper 
So here I already have the color that I want to use now. Um, but uh, yeah, so that doesn't matter. But don't mix your colors. I mean, when you put this here and you put another color there and you have used ink, of course, you would mix up your colors and then you perhaps get a brown or something like sludge. Uh, and you don't want that, of course. So we are going to take a fresh paper or a paper where we have the same ink. And now I want to have a turquoise. Um, I don't have um, peacock feathers as, as a spray. That would be perhaps the color that I uh, would choose now, but I don't have that. So I'm going with a mixture out of Broken China. This is the Oxide Spray. Just a little bit of this and then I'm going to use Uncharted Mariner but this time it's the spray stain to get it a little bit darker here and there because now on this uh, on these things I want to have yeah how can I say that that it's not all the same color so I want to have some shades of this turquoise and Salvage Patina Spray Stain, of course, is a really intensive turquoise. And this gives a really cool mixture, as you will see in a second. So I'm spritzing this here and there. And then also some water. And then I'm carefully doing it like this to make sure that this ink is really into the um, fabric and then we are going to take some more Mod Podge and our paintbrush and I'm going to do the same thing on these turquoise petals as well. First apply the Mod Podge and then crumble it up and after that I'm drying this as well with my heat gun. Okay, so when these things are dry and the wax is totally dry, then we can put everything together. But there's one thing that I would like to mention before we do that. Of course, you could put this Kintsugi effect not only to these uh, colored fabric layers, you could also put the this effect to the more neutral things that you have perhaps chosen so i mean these for example or also to the other paper layers but i can't recommend that um, i think it's too much when this effect is on uh, every single layer so i will grunge these layers up a little bit in a second <clears throat> to make them look more interesting um, and that this kintsugi effect is not too overpowering the whole thing. So now we can decide uh, how we want to put these together and I think this for example looks really cool then we can put no not this one um, so I, I like to do that step by step so I like to oh that's good um, lay that down and then see how everything will go together so of course the bigger ones have to go to the very bottom layer um, so that we can see them later and of course we can also include these here that we have not colored with the spray I think that looks also cute when that is in between there somewhere so let's try and see how this can go together and I also don't care if I have something left over from this project uh, then I can of course always use that in a future project so when I have some of these things here left over I don't care about that I mean it's good to have something that you can store in your stash until you need it this is really cool when you have only this portion of this yellow here that looks really gorgeous okay so this will stay as it is this looks also really great and what we now <clears throat> of course can also do is we can take some thread so i have some white thread here and i will also take some black in a second 
and we can just come on, take some of this and put that for example here you could also of course use some lace or other scraps that you have and just do it like this and then yeah I guess I want to have it here to break this white a little bit like this and here it needs some of this turquoise as well I guess I'm not so happy with this one. That's better. Let's add some thread here as well. I think I will use the white one here. And of course now you could um, layer what you want in between here. You could use some more die cuts. For example, those little leaf die cuts or any other thing that you like. And you can just place that in between I want to have this today not so bulky because these will go into a journal um, if you make these for example for a cover that of course would also look really really nice then you could also make them a little bit thicker and a little bit more dimensional but for this uh, yeah reason why I'm making them it's I think better to have them a little bit more flat yeah I think that's great so we have these left over and we can save them for another project and now I will take my stapler just to hold these things in place do we want to have some thread here as well I guess I want to do that <coughs> I will staple these layers together just to hold them in place because now I want to put a button here in the middle. Of course that's optional, you could also just staple them, then it would look like this. That's also really cute, especially if you like the look of these little staples. Uh, but for me this is just a little help because uh, yeah, all of these layers are difficult to hold in, in your hands. So uh, I will put the staple thingy there where the button goes so that you will not see where it is stapled later. But you can of course also, and I will demonstrate that here, do it like this and then the button later on will go here. And you could also staple eh. <laughs> here somewhere <laughs> and then it will look like this in the end and I think that looks really interesting when these little staples are here they are a little bit uh, invisible you know but if the eye has something to explore I think that is really really interesting for such a project and now I'm taking just a black thread I, think I want to have this one here and now I'm just poking through here and through the other hole Ooh, that is, be careful when you do that because ooh, that is a little bit hard to do and then I'm just going back here to the front like this and I'm making a little knot or two so that it holds really well and then we can decide how long we want to have these black threads. I think like this. And I will go on in the same way with the buttons on the others. So when this is done, um, you could leave them like they are. I think they are really, really cute. Um, for, I would say, a not not grungy journal <laughs> these would be really great but for my taste and for the journal that I'm planning to put them in uh, this is not grungy enough so um, I'm taking this crazy mixture here this is just some distress oxide ink 
from an ink pad so you can still see the ink pad in here I had a broken ink pad and I've uh, teared the uh, felt off from the ink pad so that I can uh, put it into water and then I have filled this glass up with water and the ink of course went into the water and now I can use that to spritz to my projects or to um, dye my papers and so on. Really helpful stuff. And that's also a great way to not waste your ink, often broken ink pad or an ink pad that you perhaps have and you don't want to continue uh, buying the refiller of this color. And now I'm splattering a little bit here and there. That's perhaps a little bit light. <laughs> I guess we can perhaps also take some ground espresso spray stain and just put some of that here and there. Not too much, but perhaps a little bit. And a little bit of water to let that run around a little bit. I will uh, mainly put that to the edges of these flowers. You could also distress the edges. I have already done that with some other flowers that I have made for my German video. That also looks nice, but it's a totally different look. I will show you that in a second. I mean the difference. Um, and this is way faster as well because now you don't have to let the layers dry in between. You can just put a little bit of ink here and there and then you, then you are done. But of course, distressing with a sponge or a blending tool, of course, would work uh, as well. With some water here. This is really cool because this gets so dark and really intensive. Okay. Like this. So compared to this technique with the ink spray, uh, this is what I got when I distressed the edges of those paper layers and also some of the fabric with um, the ink pad and a blending brush that yeah looks also cool but it's a totally different effect and I wanted to have some variations for the flowers because I have eight now uh, in total and I wanted to have them a little bit different and also um, try this out how the different mediums would work and yeah this was an experiment as I said in the beginning so uh, for the future of course I want to know what I like better and what works better for me so that was the reason why I did it a little bit different and now I will dry these and when they are dry I want to add some tiny white splatters I'm using um, some white gesso mixed with some water just to bring them to life a little bit. I guess white splatters are always good to bring something to life, especially things like flowers or birds or, or you know, butterflies and that stuff. And I guess without white splatters, <laughs> it wouldn't be my project. So, <laughs> okay, so now I think we are done. And I'm really, really happy how this little experiment turned out. I'm really, really happy with these flowers. And I'm especially happy <laughs> that this Kintsugi effect is so delicate and so pleasing for the eye. I mean, it's not too bam, not too golden, um, but grungy at the same time. And if you want to hear my honest opinion <laughs> about... <laughs> The distressing, I mean, this, uh, these steps that we've made with the oxide ink from here and this spray compared to adding the ink with a blending brush. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say that this is 
easier, more beautiful, more grungy than this. I don't know why, but I like this better than this. If you want, if you would mix them up, you would probably not recognize that we've used two different techniques. But let's take some that has more yellow. If you want to compare, for example, these both, I mean, they look very different. That's uh, a fact. But uh, this one with the ink from the spray is so much more grungy than this one where I have added it with the, <coughs> oh, excuse me, with the blending brush. Yeah, and you also, of course, when you put that <coughs> with this nozzle from the spray, you also um, would catch some of your other materials. So this button, for example, whoop, sorry, this button, for example, has some fabric on it. So the button, of course, also doesn't stay white and it looks like naturally aged and not painted or something like that really cool i really really like these and i hope that you like this idea and i hope that you will make some flowers like this by your own if you want to post them on instagram for example then please tag me in some way so that i can see your results and I would love if, if I would see some of your <laughs> grungy flowers with this Kintsugi technique as well. So have a very great day and see you the next time. Bye bye.